Welcome to the BaseballSwing.com. Joe Colucci here with you. Uh, we're taking a look at Barry Bonds today. I'm going to kind of break him down. I think I have a good handle on a uh, couple things, and key things that Bonds did that uh, might be able to help you. So, uh, that said, as I did with uh, the Fernando Tatis video, I just want to make myself clear. Um, I am anti-steroid. I know Bonds was accused of it. I don't know if he was ever convicted or caught or whatever. Um, look, he did them, so I don't care. Um, I don't believe in them. I think they're bad and um, for a number of reasons. But the purpose of the channel is really to help you guys. Um, and Bonds, quite frankly, does, you know, was tremendous before and during the steroids. Um, and he, by his own right, he's a guy worth looking at and breaking down and, you know, likely would have been a Hall of Famer. He has some things more importantly in his swing that I want to share with you that I think can help you. So that's that's why we're out out here doing this and what we're kind of having him on here. So also before I get started, big uh, shout out Baseball Swing PD. I grabbed so many videos there and uh, they got some great stuff. It's just a great site on uh, YouTube. You can go check out and look at all kinds of swings. So what is Bonds doing and what makes him so special? Why do he have so much power? Why do he hit so? with such consistency um, early on in his career. And even through the uh, later days with the giants, he, he did things very similarly. And I want to focus on a couple key things that I think might be of help to you. So bonds from a kinesiology standpoint and sequencing standpoint, really leveraged everything he had. Um, and he did it in the correct order and he did it in a way that allowed him to be very, very successful. Um, Bonds will, as we like to say, things going forward, things going backwards. Scap loading, hands going a little bit backwards, while his leg paws out in front of him. He gets the heel plant. And a couple areas I want you to focus on. Bonds' knee will be the first thing that moves and kicks in before he lowers his hands, before he slots his bat, really before he does anything. Virtually simultaneous with that move, he will begin to rotate his shoulders or um, hips open while his shoulders stay square. So as I scrub through this, just see if we can kind of see a little bit of this. Now, this was a little more evident in Bond's swing early in his career, ironically, when he was a little bit maybe thinner and more flexible. Uh, but regardless, that knee is working in, hips are starting to rotate open, shoulders are staying square. And when we get a different angle on this, you'll really see how drastic the, uh, the difference in angles are. From this point, I think Bond just kind of sits here and waits. And one of the other keys that I think he does um, is he takes this lead shoulder and he just kind of rotates it immediately behind where his head is. And that, in essence, drops the bat barrel flatter. It pulls his arm across his chest. And it really is evidence that he's not leading with the hands pushing forward. Now, there are guys in history that have done that move better, right? And Bonds did get just a little pushy with his hands. But by and large, it's the velocity he takes and rotates his upper body through the zone. Again, key on the front shoulder, uh, ripping around behind the head. That's what pulls his arms and his bat barrel into the zone. So right from here, there's his impact or where he'd like impact to be. Frame forward, maybe. Beautiful. Um see this at real speed and we'll, we'll try to get to one is really phenomenal i mean it is just like lightning quick again scap loading striding out forward back knee kicks in hips begin to rotate and then the shoulders at this point when he says yep i want to go this is when it really i think the magic happens the velocity he can rot his, rotate his upper body with is just phenomenal so to me, this is where he's launching because he said, yep, I'm going to go. He's uh, loaded up, he's stretched out, and he just turns that shoulder behind the head. And before you know it, that bat barrel gets dragged into impact. Uh, point of interest here too, left arm really pretty connected with his left side. Uh, that really looks like impact. His uh, arm somewhat across his chest, as, as big as he was by this point, it's hard almost even to look normal. He's showing a lot of signs that a lot of great hitters um, have in common. 
One thing that is a little different, um, he gets into here, and again, that knee going first and those hips rotating and the shoulders kind of staying back, that's not that unusual, right? When we look at the other angle, you see that the amount of difference between the shoulder turn and hip turn, that is unusual. But what he does unique here is he just, he doesn't continue forward with his, you know, his left side, his backside. Knee doesn't really continue forward. Hip doesn't close in. He's focused more on an upper body turn because he's coiled up and just, again, rips that shoulder right behind his head. And that gets him and drags a bat into impact. All right. Here's the angle where you're going to see it a little more prevalently from the difference in the hip and shoulder turn. So again, a little bit of a bat tip from Bonds. Hands are kind of low uh, versus the average guy, but no biggie. He raises them up. He strides forward. That back knee is already kicking in. Hips are turning. And look at the difference between his hips are pointing at second base. His shoulders are pointing at shortstop. This creates that stretch we talked about in the lower back, in the ass, in the, in the hamstrings even even across the upper back. He's wound up. So to say he has launched, uh, you know, earlier than this is incorrect. He hasn't launched yet. Again, what's unique a little bit about Bonds is he takes this upper body and just rotates it in a circle like he's in a phone booth. And I think that's part of the reason he was so quick to the ball. Um, it just gets that shoulder working behind the head, and that really drags that bat through the zone not necessarily all about the back tip it's not necessarily all about you know staying over that rear leg it's a combination of things but to me he's not launched here at all his foot's down it's been down for a bit he's got his shoulders closed his hips open and that creates the torsion and the, and the tension that can unwind and snap through impact at this point in the swing you'll notice his hips and shoulders kind of down the right field line right chest kind of at the pitcher belt buckle kind of at the pitcher. So in other words, from this position, where his chest is pointing back towards the catcher and his hips are wide open, he eventually catches up with his chest and the hips and the chest end up by this point, pointing in the same direction. That is a short period of time. And that's why, again, he created so much power through impact. Beyond being a strong guy, juiced to the gills, uh, and a, a superior athlete, really. But you guys can strive for this position. You can work on this. See if it helps your game. Uh, technically, you know, this is really good. Do this. Um, at least try it and see how it works for you. Anyway, um, so he turns that upper body, catches up with the lower body, and there's the classic Barry Bonds finish. Beautiful. Um, and incidentally, I think he kind of does this move where that you see his back leg kind of come off balance. I... I Love to have a technical explanation for this, but I think it might just be. Well, first of all, he's way on top of his back leg where most guys are a little more evenly distributed. So maybe that has something to do with it. But I really just think it's the velocity this bat is moving that even as strong as he is, he can't take it. It just gives and he spins around. Uh, but it's neither here nor there. The ball's gone. This is a great swing. All right, from behind, again, Bond's hips starting to open, shoulders still closed. And when he says go in his mind, notice he's on both feet. He has not launched yet. When this front shoulder rips behind his head, that's his launch. And that's the beginning of his launch. Bang. There it is. Bang. That's the launch. And again, that pulls the bat barrel down, flattens it, and gets it behind the ball. Okay? It's not a snapping of the hands or wrists or any of that. It's this position here where the hips are open, shoulders are closed. And he says, yep, I'm going. Front shoulder rips back behind the head. Okay, and that's what keeps him rearward and over his rear leg. Whereas most of the great players and, and most players will move a little bit more forward and use their body mass to hit into the ball. Bonds, you know, did it really, quite frankly, different. All right. Um, let's grab just kind of one more view from the front just to reiterate what we were talking about so Bonds, uh, Bonds has got the bat tipped a little bit here balls gaining ground on him gaining ground um, he starts to raise his hands the bat barrel will start to flatten a little but again the key here is this he gets into heel plant his hips are wide open shoulders are closed um, and again first move is rip this uh, front shoulder right round behind his head that drags the bat through the zone now, 
Looks like this ball was going to be maybe on the black, maybe a little inch or two inside. Bonds hits it and hits it hard, right? He kills it. And you'll notice his lead arm all bowed up here. Well, he had to do that to adjust. You should adjust. He can't straighten his arm with this ball bearing in on him. But what he can do is get into this good land position with this differential between his shoulders and hips in terms of the turn, build up all that tension, let it go, recognize it's inside, and he just bows out his elbow and pulls his hands in. This is good hitting, guys. The guy made a great pitch, and he just destroyed it. All right? So don't be afraid of that. That's something you should be doing. Um, I want to roll through just a couple of swings here. It looks like uh, skinny Barry Bonds. Still with the Giants. And again, you're going to see the same things. That back knee, the hip rotation, the differential between the shoulder turn and hip turn. Um, it's all the same stuff. It's all the same stuff. It's what Bonds did best. Uh, one of the kind of point of interest here, again, you see the hips starting to open. That's still back. Shoulders haven't turned. Hips are, you know, opening. Shoulders are square. Uh, back knee has kicked in, right? And he just rips that shoulder behind his head. Now, look, he's a little bit early on this. So, Bonds' arms and hands get out in front of him. He adjusted, just like he adjusted on that inside fastball. There's nothing wrong with this, guys. Adjust. Make contact. Hit it hard. Do what you got to do, right? You're not going to have perfect timing. You're fooled a little here. Whoops. Extend the arms out. Now, one thing I will say, if he were moving forward, maybe in a little more traditional manner or the way I kind of like it, he'd be gaining ground on that the whole time. and wouldn't have to extend quite as much. Um, so not a big deal, though. I like bond swing. I like his mechanics. It's just not exactly what I teach. Um, here's a skinny Barry Bonds again. It looks like back with the Pirates, but you'll see the same things. Now, Shoulders are very square, even closed a little. Hips are flying open. Back knee is kicking down and in. Um, he does look like he has a little more extension here. Uh, you know, a little lighter and more flexible, perhaps. But he's doing the same things, guys, the same things. It is this front shoulder ripping behind his head that drags the bat through the ball. And this is the little bit of pushy that I talk about, Bonds. Now, he is very connected, right? That elbow is next to the hips. Arm is just a little bit of... of away from the chest, so he's not quite Griffey-esque, but you know, you don't have to be perfect. Um, we want to get really good. We want to understand the fundamentals, the, the important things, um, and he does quite a few good things here. I just think he pushes with the hands, I mean, just a hair, just a hair. I'd prefer these hands be a little more left of him and a little less in front of him at this time, but he had pretty good success without my help. Anyway, rotates through. Uh, looks like the younger Bonds moved forward a little bit more. It was a little less rear-legged, but, you know, slightly. But the same principles apply. Back knee kicks in. Hips rotate open. Shoulders turn to square the bat. Um, another good angle here. So look at that left knee back kicking in that's starting his move down into the ball this is really where he starts launching um hips are wide open shoulders are still square he says yep i'm going watch that front shoulder rip right behind his head now he's moving backwards here a little bit too trying to make room uh, might have felt beat on it but again it's a game of adjustments so your t work should really where you want to kind of look mechanically perfect um but in the game, you know, understand what's going on and do the best you can to have good mechanics. But you got to compete. That's the number one thing you get in that box, just compete. All right. So I found this online. I want to give the guy credit. Hold on. Brian Anderson posted this. Um, really cool little side-by-side -side with Ted Williams and Barry Bonds. Uh, it looks like he's trying to highlight here some of the things they do similarly, which they do a couple things similarly. So I just thought it was cool, and I figured I'd throw it in at the end here in case you haven't seen it. Um, as to what they're doing the same and different, um, both with that little back elbow scap load, both of them kind of shoulder down. And then from this position here, they're starting to make their minds up, and you're going to watch both of them just kind of drop the bat barrel and start to rotate. Ted moves a little more forward. Barry stays a little more back. 
not too, too different. Uh, one good teaching point here I think you guys should understand. Now, you're looking at two guys with, you know, 1,200 and something home runs or 1,300 home runs collectively. These are huge, huge power guys. Yet, note the length of their stride and the width of their stance. Both of them. So, we'll get into uh, kind of pick up a little bit. And they just plant the foot back down. Now, to boot, Bonds is in a home run derby, I believe, in this swing. So, he's trying to jack it. He's got no other, you know, purpose. Yet, the stride was very short. Uh, he's really pretty narrow. Um, Williams was a little wider, but not wide by any stretch. This enabled both of them to rotate through the ball very freely. When your stance is more narrow, um, you're going to be able to rotate a little easier. Um, it's okay to be wide. It's just going to change your, I guess, swing tendencies a little bit. See what comfortable, what works for you. The key here with both of them is as that front shoulder starts to work around, that's when the bat drops. They're not doing it artificially. And again, just, you know, both beautiful through impact. I do prefer Ted's swing, but if you you watch like game speed swings, Ted Williams was, you know, like almost like Griffey, like it was just so pretty and so fluid. Bond's definitely a little more jerky, um, but still in all, I mean, just great mechanics. The gap load, short stride, no stride, heel down, and then look at the pitch and say, okay, yep, I'm gonna go, bang. So, all right, I hope that helped, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, once again, Joe Colucci with thebaseballswing.com. Um, if you'd like a lesson, just go over to the website, uh, sign up, be happy to work with you. Uh, questions or comments, put them down below in the comment section. If you have a question you want to ask offline, go to the website and drop it in the, the form there, and I'd be happy to get back to you about it. Um, until next time, guys, play well, enjoy yourselves, and uh, once again, we'll look forward to seeing you soon.